Well, hello everybody, and are you ready to go flying today? Oh, I am so glad to hear that, because yes, I am ready to go flying too, and I think we have some really spectacular areas to go and visit today. Now, I got a message from a YouTuber who uses the name Canadian001, and he wrote, I really enjoy your flights, Father Dane. Well, thank you very much. I enjoy making them. He said, do you think you could do a flight from CYYC Calgary to CYVR Vancouver? Well, of course, of course. He goes on to say, it is a short flight, but a beautiful one. And yes, it is, because I've made that flight myself. Now he says, Film F Sim Studios provides pretty good scenery for both of those airports, which is true. However, uh, there was a slight issue that I had with the Calgary airport scenery. Now, I installed the CYYC scenery when I had P3D version 4 and it worked flawlessly. And most sceneries, when you go to version 5, they followed quite flawlessly. There was only two or three that didn't. And unfortunately, Calgary was one of those and this is the reason why. Have a look at this picture. Now, this is a screenshot I took of my simulator with Calgary CYYC scenery installed. And yes, <laughs> it's got a slight elevation problem, doesn't it? My aircraft is below ground, so that's not going to work out too well. But the scenery for CYVR Vancouver is really very good. And FSIM, um, FSIM Studios did a very good job with that. So unfortunately, I can't use anything, uh, any scenery for Calgary, so I have to use the default P3D. Sorry about that, I know. It's one of those things. Now, I did write to FSIM Studios to ask them if they have a fix, if they've got something that they could do or recommend. I got one note back saying they would send something to me in a couple of weeks. Well, that was a year ago. I've written twice since then, and certainly a few days ago in preparation for this video, and got no reply. So I suspect that they are very, very busy with all of the uh, scenery that they're producing now for MSFS, the Microsoft Simulator, which of course I don't have, don't need, but it would be nice if there was something for this. But no matter, we will make the best of it. So the Calgary CYYC airport scenery is going to be P3D default and the Vancouver CYVR airport scenery is going to be made by FSIM Studios. I did some research and I found that there are regular flights between Calgary and Vancouver and we're going to be following WestJet, WestJet Flight 131, WestJet Flight 131. It's WS131 in FlightAware. And they were the ones, by the way, that still run the Boeing 737-800, which of course is what we are in here. 
Now, I have to say this about our friend from Canada. I went to Canadian001 YouTube site, and this is what it looks like. Look at that beautiful picture of that old BOAC jet. Isn't that magnificent? BOAC, that's British Overseas Airways Corporation. And the domestic one was BEA, British European Airways. And eventually they did merge at some point and become what is known today as British Airways. I have flown as a passenger on BOAC several times, and this, this brought back a lot of memories. So thank you for having that picture on your YouTube homepage. Right, well, I think that we are ready then to go into pre-flight and let's see what we can do about getting everything planned and checking the weather for our route today, okay? See you in pre-flight. Right, here we are looking at Flight Aware and at WestJet Flight 131. Here you can see the other code designators, WS131 right there. This particular one arrived over five hours ago and it said it arrived at gate B26. And it says here that it left gate B C53. Now in America, Canada, they always put the uh, gate information available so it makes it very easy to be able to follow the flight as exactly as possible. Now this one of course was five hours ago and here you can see B26 is the arrival. It was on time departing but arrived 26 minutes late. Perhaps there was a wind or weather conditions to contend with but we'll have a look. Now here's the route that they took right here. Now if you zoom in on this you can bring up, do you see there? That's the that's the runway right there that they departed from. And that would be 35 left. That is 35 left at Calgary. And over here at Vancouver, it arrived on, that's 26 left. That runway is 26 left. So we're able to know in advance what the runways will be and we'll insist on that I think. Looking at the uh, elevation or the altitude that they were at, they flew at 38,000 feet so we will model that ourselves. Yes we can do that. Looking down here we see other information. And this particular model was a Max 8, that's okay. We, some of the flights were the 737-800. The speed was 514, the altitude was filed, was 36,000, but they obviously went to 38,000 because that's what we just saw. The distance is 383 nautical miles. And here, here is the route. So it's very, very simple. There's the Botag, there's the route to Booth, and then it was the, the Canuck 5 arrival into Vancouver. So we'll do exactly the same as that. So that's the route and checking once again on that elevation. Yes, it's 38,000 feet. They may have filed 36, but they went to 38. So we will do the same. And here we are in windy.com looking at Calgary, CYYC. Here you can see Calgary and there's the airport slightly to the northern part of the city. And the wind is swirling in coming from the north. 
It says that 10 minutes ago, the wind was 340 degrees at 14 knots. It's a good clip. And it was visibility was 15 statute miles. There's a few clouds at 7,600 feet, but it is VFR. Temperature is a chilly minus 12 degrees Celsius. Ouch. Definitely going to need the heat on today. Dew point minus 16, altimeter 30.72. And it looks like it's been VFR for the past little while. Looking at the runways, here you can see the the runway that the previous flight took, there's 35 left, and it was the longest one. And going up here, oh, by the way, the flight uh, departed from stand 53. I think 53 is on either this satellite or it's this satellite, but it may well be here. And let's see if we can, no, it doesn't zoom in enough to be able to see it, so. But we will find out which one of these it is. But it does mean that's going to be a long taxi to get all the way down to the end of the runway because the runway uh, is 12,675 feet long, wow. So that's two miles. It's uh, quite a trek down there to get to the end of the runway. But if that's what it's called for, that's what we shall have to do. Looking now at our destination, wind, according to this, is 10 degrees at five knots, six statute miles, mist, mist in the area. Clouds, 18,000 VFR. Temperature, two degrees, so it's warmer. And dew point is also two degrees, so fog is possible. Altimeter 30.47. Before, just a little while ago, it was at the lower IFR, uh, which of course is pretty tough to see anything. Uh, suspicion is that there was fog coming in on that area. Here you can see where the airport is and the wind is sweeping across, coming from the Rocky Mountains and sweeping down across to the Pacific over here. Looking to the south, here you can see there's Victoria right here, Port Angeles, and right here is Seattle. Tacoma down here and so plenty of airports are in the vicinity should anything go pear-shaped, which of course it could. Looking at the runways, this is the runway that it came in on, uh, the flight that we will be following, and that's 26 left. So it came in on here. The stand that they came in on, I'm not sure what it is on here, but we will find it and we will try to follow the same one because it came in at stand 26. But we'll look at that in a little bit. Right here we are in Simbrief and let's go into and put in our data. We are Ryanair and we are 186. And we are departing from CYYC and we're going to go to CYVR. We'll look at the alternate in just a moment. Here's the airframe. We are Ryanair's 186. Here's the cruise profile. There's our registration. Now it's calling here for a departure of runway 35 right. We're going to make that 35 left to match the other one. So we'll put that in. Arrival runway was on 26 left, so we'll put 26 left in there. Going to put in 380. We are, of course, full, and we have one ton of, yes, champagne and caviar. <laughs> Now, 
Now here you can see there's the actual flight and it works out in detail. Route distance is 375 nautical miles. And here is our route. Kamloops is the alternate airport should things go uh, amiss, which of course they could, but we're not hoping for it. And there's the information from that airport. Here is the actual route from Calgary over the Rocky Mountains descending to Vancouver over here. Okay, looks good. Let's go ahead and save that. So we'll save the flight and generate the flight plan. Now here's the summary, 186, 737, CYYC to CYVR. There's the alternate and there's our flight level. Airtime is one hour and four minutes. There's the block fuel that we're going to need to have put on board. There's the route. So it says go direct to Botag, take the Quebec 894 to Booth and then use the Canuck 5 approach. Looking at the flight plan detail, here we are. This is our designation, Ryanair 186. Right here, the F380 is our flight level, cruising level, and there is our flight plan right there. This is the alternate airport, should we need to go there. We'll need to know that we are cost index six. We'll need to know the average wind up at our cruising altitude. Here's the block fuel. Reserves 2,896. That's almost 2.9 metric tons. So we'll be putting 2.9 when we go into the FMC. Trip and taxi is 3,073. So that's close to 3.1. No tankering recommended. Now here's the actual route that the previous flight, the flight aware that we checked on, the WestJet 131, took. And we're going to try to follow this as exactly as possible. Of course, if the wind changes, then things do change and then we have to change. Now we're going to need to know the descent information. So we'll need to know the information for flight level 200 going in descent, flight level 150 and flight level 100, which is 10,000 feet. And here's the wind information for close to our cruising altitude. This is for flight level 390. We'll be at 380, but it will be pretty much this. And it looks like we're going to have a little bit of a tailwind going across at that altitude, which is probably why the previous flight climbed up to that. But they still lost some time somewhere. So I don't know where it is that they lost 26 minutes in a deep in a delay going in, but we will try to be perfect. And here's the vertical profile. As you can see here, we start out from Calgary up here. We cross all of the Rocky Mountains, yes. All the way up to the top, across to here, and then straight down into Vancouver. And trying not to hit any of these mountains on the way. And it says this is a the dotted line that you see here. This is the tropopause and we will be above it for part of it until we make our descent. And that should give us a little bit more stable air at this point so that when we are toasting each other with the champagne and caviar, we won't be spilling any of that French champagne that we serve on our flight. None of that cheap plunk, you understand. We only have the best. 
Right, we have everything that we need, so let's go into Navigraph Charts. Right, here we are in Navigraph Charts, and this is the new uh, Navigraph Charts 8, as you can see here, and I've got it set for VFR up here, so it shows all of these mountain uh, chains that are around the world, which is very useful to see. So here I'm going to click on Import Flight. I'm going to import from SimBrief. And here's the one that we just made. So click on that. And go down here, click Import and Open. And there it all is. So there's the information for the entire flight. Coming over from here, which is Calgary, and going down to Vancouver here. We'll be using the Canuck 5 with a booth transition. So this is good information right there. So everything that we need is already in place. We just need to add some of the information. So if we look here at our origin, click on that, go to taxi. Now we will need the airport information, so that's below. In fact, all of this information is below there. If you can see here, there's the Canop 5 arrival for 8, and here's the one for 26 left, which is ours. Here's the airport information. But we will need to know the parking positions. So I'm going to go into here. Now we'll be coming at departing from 53. So here's 53 right there. So I'm going to need to pin this to the bottom also. Because this gives us the parking coordinates and information that we need. Close this and now go over to our to Vancouver. Look at the charts. Go to taxi. Here you can see the airport information is already there and so are the departures, uh, the arrival uh, stars, but we are going to need the positions. Let's see if this one will bring it up. We need stand 26. Well, here's 26 right there. Now we're going to try to come in at the same exact same stand as long as there's nothing already parked there, but that is where we're going to try to come in at. So I'm going to pin that and everything else that we need is already there. So good. Close all that. Now looking at a close up of the airport, this is one of the features of, of Navigraph 8 is that you can zoom in and see everything you need to know. So for instance, we'll be departing from 5.3, which is over here. So now we can see with detail all of our departure route to get to the active runway right there. And it's also the same at our destination. Isn't that amazing? So we'll be following that. Apparently, the departure just calls to go out, make a turn, and go to Botag and make a departure that way. So, but here's the really interesting part. We'll be crossing the Rocky Mountains right here. Look at that. So we hopefully, at 38,000 feet, we will get to see something pretty spectacular. At least, that's my hope. All right, we're all ready. Let's go on into the cockpit and get ourselves all ready to go. Ah, uh, 
there you are. Do come on in and take your seat. And here we are. We're in Calgary. Calgary. And this is CYYC Airport. Now, obviously, this is P3D default. So, therefore, all of the parking stands of the real airport are not available in P3D. Instead, we are given generic parking stands. So, I chose the generic parking stand of, I think it was G22. And that put me right here where, if I look at this chart, and you can see here on the right, um, it says that we're at 39, stand 39. And as for the other uh, satellite coming from the terminal building, I couldn't manage to get there, so it just wasn't available. So this is the best that I could do, is to get ourselves here. But I do have Active Sky running, and as you can see, the weather is clear. We have some cloud over there a little bit to the right. That's over to the east. But overhead, it's looking very good. And I'm very jealous because here it is dark, thick cloud, and it is belting down with rain here in England. So, but we are nine degrees in England here. Of course, is a chilly day. It's a clear day, but it is also very frosty. So, we'd better get ourselves ready, I think, and warm up the aircraft so that people can get on board. Now, I checked the tires, kicked all the tires, made sure everything was good, and I made the windows sparkle. They are absolutely flawless. There's not a spot anywhere on these windows. I worked very hard on that. I really did. <laughs> anyway, here we go. First thing we do, we turn on the battery. We check that we have enough battery power. Then we turn on the fuel pumps and then we start the APU. Now here we go. The low oil pressure light has come on. And I'm looking now for the there it is, it's starting to climb. That's the engine gas temperature right there. Over here on this, I have this turned to APU generator. Of course, it's not showing there's any voltage yet, so uh, we have to wait until this gets itself established. But once this comes down and stabilizes, I want to look for a light to come on here. And when it does, then I can, ah, there it is. Now, I have switched the power to the APU generator, and it shows that we now have 115 volts. So now we can do lots of things. We can even put the kettle on and make ourselves a cup of tea. Right, now that we've got 115 volts showing up there, we're going to turn on the galley, turn on the emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seatbelt. Over here, I'm turning on the left and the right window heat because we don't want it to frost up on us. I'll leave the probes off for the moment. And I'm going to turn on the electrical hydraulic pumps. Over here, the forward service hatch is open and the equipment stairs are down. And yes, people are queuing up to get on board as we speak, our self-loading cargo. And then over here, I'm going to turn on the APU bleed, the recirculating fans, the packs, and... There is the heat rushing through the cabin to warm everything up because the outside air temperature is minus 12 degrees. That is chilly. And I'll also turn on the IRS to get the GPS 
set up as well so that we can get our start position put in. And the last thing I'll do is I'll turn on the steady light and that way the ground crew knows that we're in here and that we are messing about. <laughs> That's uh, technical terminology for programming our computer system. <laughs> okay. Now that we've got that on, I think we are now ready to program the FMC. The first thing that we need to do is we need to check that the air rack is in date and that the uh, onboard program is showing no errors. Go to position initialization and we are at C, YYC. We don't know the gate really because it's not going to be in the, the normal database. So I'm going to go to next page. And I'm going to simply read off what the IRS system is saying should be our location. So I'm going to push that, put it into temporary, go back, and now I've set our GPS start system. Now I go to root, origin again is CYYC, and we're going to go to C, Y, and Victor Romeo, which is, of course, Vancouver. We are Ryanair, so we are R, Y, R, and we are number 186. And then we go to next page, and here we're, we go straight to Botag is our first one, so B, O, T, A, G. Then we go on the Quebec 894. So Quebec 894. And that will take us then to Booth. B double O T H. And that is it. We activate, execute, go to fix. I need to put in three circles, on screen circles around our destination, which is CYVR. And we need to have a four mile circle. We need to have a 10 mile circle. And we need a 30 mile circle. Now I go to descent, go to forecast. Transition level in the North American continent is 180. So 180. And we need to put in the values for flight level 200, flight level 150, and flight level 100. The Q&H at our destination is 1032, 1032. And then the information for flight level 200 or 20,000 feet is 359 at 39. 359 at 39. At 15,000 feet, it is 337 at 24. 337 at 24. And at 10,000 feet, it is 27 and 10. So 27 and 10. Execute that. Now we go to departures and arrivals, go to departures, and here's where we need to tune in to ATIS to see what the local weather is. And the ATIS frequency is 128.22, so 128.22. YYC Calgary International Airport Information Echo 2024 Zulu Wind 336 at 10 zero. Visibility 15 Sky condition Clear Temperature minus 1 2 Dew point minus 1 8 Altimeter 1040 zero, zero. Landing and departing Runway 35 right and Runway 35 left DFR aircraft say direction of flight All aircraft read back hold short instructions Advise controller on initial contact you have Echo Right we have Echo 
So let's get our request our IFR clearance. Calgary clearance delivery Ryanair 186 IFR2 Vancouver International ready to copy. Ryanair 186 is cleared to Bravo Oscar Oscar Tango Hotel Airport as filed. Fly runway heading climb and maintain 10,000 departure frequency is 125.9 us clock 0621. Ryanair 186 cleared to Bravo Oscar Oscar Tango Hotel Airport as filed. Fly runway heading climb and maintain 10,000 departure on 125.9 Ryanair 186, Redback is correct. Contact round on 121.9, when ready to taxi. Right, we have our clearance. We are cleared to fly runway heading, climb and maintain 10,000 feet. Got that up there already. And then the departure is on 125.9. I have the score code already in, so we are set. So. We have two possible runways for departure. I may not get any choice as to which one uh, that I get to depart from, but let's get the clearance and see what they give us, and then we'll go from there. It can only be three five left or three five right, it's one of the two, so let's see what they say. And request a taxi. Calgary ground, Ryanair 186 with Echo ready to taxi by FR. Ryanair 186, taxi two and hold shorter runway 35 left using taxiway Golf Charlie contact tower on 118.4 when ready. Taxi two and hold short runway 35 left using taxiway Golf Charlie Ryanair 186. Well, we got it. 35 left is the one that the previous flight took place, so we will do 35 left and we're not going to worry about any of the SIDS. We're just going to do that because we're going to go out, make ourselves a turn and then come in and join our flight route, which is what the other one did, by the way. So now I'm now going to go to departures and arrivals go here we're still looking at coming in on two six left so I'm going to find there it is ILS two six left and the we're going to come in on the Canuck five two six left right there and that is all we need to do now I'm going to go to switch to legs and we'll go through this and have a look and see how the flight plan works out. The first thing I need to do is I need to switch this to plan just by clicking that. Then I'm going to go through the step on each one of these and see if there are any issues, discontinuities, breaks or anything. There's the 30 mile circle and everything so far so good. There's the saved waypoint and straight in to land on runway 26. It's a very straightforward flight plan. Can't go wrong. And here's the four mile circle and there's the 10 mile circle. So everything is looking good. Right, I'm gonna switch back to map. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn on the weather on this side and turn on the data there you can see the data points so that we are all set to go i'm going to turn on the terrain on your side and put the data on and now i'm going to turn on the tcas so that we can see if there's any other aircraft in the area and that they can also see us right looking good so far So now we know exactly where we're going, we've got, so far, we don't have the original parking gate, but we do have the departure runway. So that's not bad, that's good so far. Now we need to go in and finish the programming of the FMC. So go to route, perform the initialization. The reserves are 2,000 
896 or 2.9. The trip and taxi is 3073. That comes to 5969. Rounded out is to 6.0 metric tons. So that would be 6 right there. 2.9 for reserves, 2.9 metric tons for reserves, cost index is 6, our cruising altitude is 380, the cruise wind is 7 at 40, 7 at 40, transition altitude is 180. And now all I need to do is double click that and it comes up and makes all the calculations for me. So execute that, go to N1 limit, so slash minus one two and put that in there. Go to takeoff, we'll be using flaps 10. I double click this and it calculates that we are 24.5 center of gravity, trim wheel value is 4.72. One click on each of these gives me the value for V1, rotate, and V2, lift off. Right, we have the information that we need. Now, on the airport information, I'm looking now at the chart, and here you can see at the at the bottom, 35 left has a 345 degree heading. So I'm going to put 345 in here. I'm going to put 345 in this one. And can I do yours? Okay. I'll put 345 in yours as well. There we go. Leave the 10,000 as it is. Now up here, I'm going to put in our flights cruising level which is 38,000 feet landing elevation is 17 feet in Vancouver so I'm going to leave that as zero now this is the pressurization panel right here so this is for pressurization inside all of our passengers are on board so bring up the stairs and close the the door there's the stairs coming up look at that how interesting that is fascinating now I'm going to bring the scale up to 20 on this screen and now I'm going to put in 145 for the Mac over here there we go now I'm going to put the flight director on here flight director on there VNAV LNAV and we have a good flight plan arm the throttle VOR 1 VOR 2 1 and 2 over here and there and VOR 1 is the frequency that's the localizer for runway 26 left when we come in and that is 110.7 VOR2 is the Vancouver VOR and that is 115.9 and I have that in the second navigation on here and we are good on that right so now I'm going to turn on the your damper the continuity light went out so that is good I'm setting 100 in my barometer for the decision height so when we come in it will give us the warning and now I'm going to turn it on to RTO yes everything is looking good right time to do a check Fuel is on board and check. Windows are all locked. Seatbelt signs are on. 
check, door lights are all out, check. MCP is programmed and set. Takeoff thrust bugs are all done, takeoff speeds are all done. CDU pre flight done, whether air on trim is set. Taxi takeoff briefing now. When we do a, a pushback, we're going to need to have our nose go to the right and our tail to the left. And now I'm going to put the anti-collision light on. So now we are ready. If you're ready, are you ready? Okay, good. In that case then, we're ready then to ask the nice people on the ground to give us a pushback. How's that? Okay, now which engine would you like to start first? Number one on the left or number two on the right? You've got your choice, it's either one. You want to start number one first? All right, I'm going to switch then to generator one and we'll ask the people on the ground to start the pushback for us. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Ready to push, tail to the left, parking brake is off. Parking brake is off. Now I'm going to do the terrible thing of turning off the Brakes heat released. so that we have enough energy to spin the engines to get them started. Brakes released, here we go. All right, now I'm switching the engine start switch on. The start valve has opened, and here you can see the engine is starting to spin up. The N2 is coming up very nicely. When this gets to 24, I'm going to introduce the fuel. Coming up close. And there it is. Fuel is going in. I'm now going to look for the engine gas temperature to heat up. Oh, look at that. That is really cooking. This is getting a good start here. Now I'm going to look for the low oil pressure light to go out, and it did. And the engines are spinning up very nicely. Very nicely indeed. And now I'm going to look up here for 115 volts. There they are. Switching to generator two, and then number two is on start. Start valve has opened. Here you can see the N2 is spinning up. Coming up very nicely. Parking brake is on. Brake set. When this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. There it is. Now I'm going to look for this to all right, steering pin is disconnected. Watch for the slip release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. They are so nice, aren't they? And here you can see the engine gas temperature is really cooking. The low oil pressure light has gone out. I'm going to go to flaps 10. Coming up very nicely there. Okay. And now I'm looking for 115 volts to show up here. There we go. Now, as soon as this red tick mark goes off, then I'll know I have balanced engines, and then I can switch. Coming up, it's get there. We go. Now I can switch to the main engines for our power, and I can go over here turn off the APU bleed, turn on the packs again, so the air, the war hot air is rushing through, and here I can turn off the APU. All oh, right. Right, generators are on. Good, probe heat is now going on, left and right. Anti-ice, it is clear and there is very little moisture. I'm going to leave it off for the moment because everything looks good. Isolation valves are good. Engine stop levers idle D10, flight deck door closed and locked. Recall is checked, flight controls checked, flaps, we have green light. 
stabilizer trim is good and auto brake is RTO, speed brake lever down in detent, ground equipment is all clear, we are clear, yes we are clear. Now we go down here and then we turn to the right and essentially we're going to follow the plan that you can see on Navigraph charts just to the side of you there and hopefully everything will work out very good. Follow mode is now going on. All right. Actually, this isn't a bad scenery, considering that it's uh, P3D default. It's predictable that they would have those buildings, but they do have kamikaze vehicles, which, you know, I would be lost without. And the visibility is looking very good. My frame rate is 36, which is... <laughs> Excellent, excellent frame rate, 36. So this is the P3D default. All right, all ready, all set. Okay then, here we go. Brake is off. Now I'll apply a little power to get started. Lights are now on. Okay. Right, we're on our way. You're gonna have to watch and make sure nothing is going to interfere. Well, there's one slight glitch. But if that's all the glitches that we see, we'll do very well. Nice view of the scenery in the general area. I mean, that is great geographic scenery there. I'm going to go down here and follow the, the golf taxi. Minor hold position, caution the Boeing 737 on the taxiway. Yeah, that's me they're talking about. 431, minor, continue taxi. Roger, orbit 431, minor. That's the Calgary skyline of the city over there. You know this moving charts of the new Navigraph 8, as you can see on there, is really quite good because all I have to do is zoom in on the chart airport and it it shows the taxiways, the nomenclature of it, and what my route is. So I'm just simply following the Orbit route. 431, minor hold position, caution the Boeing 737 on the taxiway. Are they still Orbit talking about me? Orbit 431, minor, continue taxi. They're probably really close to my tail. Now here's where I've got to see where we cross over. And there we go, that's the crossover point. Making sure that there's nothing coming as we cross over this runway here.
you have to go all the way down to the bottom here. And there's the tower over there. Wave nicely at the nice people in the tower. <laughs> oh yeah. And I think you should be able to see the Calgary skyline over there. go a little bit faster on this taxiway in order to get to the bottom. It is a long way to the end of the runway. Orbit 431, minor hold position, cautionally Boeing 737 on the taxiway. Hold position, orbit 431, minor. Orbit 431, minor, continue taxi. It must be right on my tail. Calgary Ground, Pacifica 8656, with hotel ready to taxi IFR. Pacifica 8656, taxi 2 and hold short of runway 35 left, using taxi where Charlie contact tower on 118.4 when ready. Taxi to and hold short runway 35 left via taxiway Charlie Pacifica 8656. Now I'm doing 31 knots on this taxiway. You can't do this on the apron, they don't let you do that, but on the taxiway there's a little bit more flexibility. And according to this, I've got another runway to cross here. This is it. Make sure nothing is coming. Everything is clear. This is the 26-8 runway. And we're clear on that. Now on a real airport, you'd have to go to those whole short lines and be given ATC clearance to cross a runway, unless they give it to you in advance. Uh, but here, of course, in the simulator, uh, those all those rules don't necessarily apply. Now we're coming up to the point where we need to make our turn to the right. So I need to slow down a little bit. One good thing is that we will be number one to depart. And here we go. Stick your hand out, would you? We're turning right here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get close up to the Hold short line and then request our turns. Calgary Tower, Ryanair 186 Sat Runway 35 left, ready for takeoff, IFR2 Bravo Oscar Oscar Tango Hotel. Ryanair 186, cleared for takeoff, runway 35 left. Alright. Cleared for takeoff, runway 35 left. Okay, takeoff briefing good, engine bleeds on, all lights are now on, engine start switch is continuous, position is sto strobe and steady, and I'm starting the clock, and we're all set to go. Alright, moving out into position, check, make sure nothing is coming. Rolling into position. Calgary Tower, orbit by 
in the middle but I will turn on the anti-ice so that we don't have any icing conditions as we pass through the cloud. Right we are on our way and it will be about another hour's flight before we are on our descent in the approach pattern for Vancouver so you've got enough time to be able to enjoy some wonderful champagne and caviar best French champagne none of that cheap plonk and I'll call you give you a shout as soon as we are 
making our preparations for landing because I will need some help. I always need help. <laughs> See you in a little bit. there you are you come back on in and take your seat did they feed you enough back there oh I'm glad to hear it good and plenty of champagne and caviar well done well done anyway I'll tell you where we are we have just crossed the Rocky Mountains and we are now descending into the plains below there is the Pacific ahead and we are now about 28 nautical miles from our destination. I have the fastened seatbelt lights on, I have the lights on outside, and I'm about to contact the tower and get our landing instructions. So here we go, and um, full stop for Vancouver. Vancouver Tower, line 186 is 24 miles east with Yankee to land. Line 186, Vancouver Tower, fly straight in, runway 26 right, altimeter 1032. Now I'm going to select another runway, if they allow it. And... Previous page of runways, they're not. Uh... Well, I'll tell you what, they're not showing that other runway. So I'm going to acknowledge this, but I'm going to land on 26 left, not 26 right. So we're going to surprise them. It's always nice to give a surprise to our air traffic control, isn't it? 
All right, now I'm going to go to flaps one. We need to slow ourselves up a little bit. And we are descending on course. As you can see with the charts, we are set to come in onto 26 left. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here. All right, looking good. And going to flat two. And 264 is the course heading for the next course change. And now going to flat five. Somewhere out there is the airport, but I don't know where yet because I can't quite see it. I think it's out over there, but not sure yet. But everything is looking good. We're descending nicely. We are on course. Now we're making... Ah, oh, there's the airport ahead there, right over there. And we are going to come in on 2-6 left rather than 2-6 right because 2-6 left was not given as an option. And usually there is an option to change the runways, but they didn't uh, they don't have it on this data sheet. So no matter, we'll just ignore ATC. And by the way, the weather was really good flying over the um, Canadian Rockies. It was a magnificent 2, view. 2,500. Check. Okay, coming up on 10 miles in a moment. We're on course to land. I have the runway in sight. And the localizer is on. We have locked onto the localizer. The glide slope is active. crossing the Fraser River here, but the airport is ahead, and I can see the runway, but not the lights yet, it looks like there's too white, too red, not sure yet, too far away, we're 10 miles, now I'm going to go to flaps 10, We have a crosswind 
and it is one degree in Vancouver. They're going to get a surprise, aren't they? <laughs> All right. Now, gear down, flaps down, and we're on the glide slope. We're on final to land. Everything is good. All right. Just going to increase the scale there. All right, are you ready? Shall we do it? Okay then. I have control. Ah, as if. We're on final. And we're coming down there. 500. 500. Coming in. Approaching minimums. 100. 100. Minimums. We are committed to land. 30. 10. Well, we landed and they're not shouting at us. That's got to be good, isn't it? All right, let's see if we can turn off on this one. All right, we'll clear the runway and then do the cleanup. And then we'll find our place to park. Pacifica 5566, clear to land, runway 26 right. All right, we are... Clear to land, runway 26 right, Pacifica 5566. And stopping the clock. Pacifica 4572. One hour, five minutes, we're on the nose. Runway 26 right, approach. Pacifica 4572, Vancouver, tower, make straight in, runway 26 right, altimeter 1032. Okay, everything is looking all right. Crew is released to go to work. Now, I'm going to zoom in here. And we have to go to... Twenty-six. Now twenty-six is down here, cross over this, then we have to go left around that. So it's over there somewhere. Let me show you this scenery though. Now this is looking out over to the left. You can see the moon is got a half moon there. And then here you can see the really very, very detailed Vancouver Airport. Now this is F Sim Studios. This is one of theirs. And while we couldn't get one for uh, Calgary, we do have this for Vancouver and it is very detailed. Look at that. Look how good that is. That is magnificent. 
and then over to the right you can see the Air Canada parked over there really really nice and my frame rate is 1920 between 19 and 20 frames per second but remember I have three very large monitors all running at 4k right let's see now if we can find our way to the the stand number 26 so go out there turn left on delta all right So this is Delta. We'll take uh, we'll take Delta and uh, go up here. Everything's clear. And there's a WestJet parked right there. That's the flight that we followed anyway. The airline. Try to go up here and then I'll take a diagonal on hotel. And then it's at the other side of that pier. So we'll take this. And then we take the Golf. Is this golf? Yep, this is golf. We go out here and then we'll go left and go around and find number two six. There's twenty one. So not doing too bad so far. And that one is 22. Kamikazes are busy. Ah. And there is I'll make that out, 22 something. But here's where I need to turn down because it's on this side here. There's 23. Uh, oh, 26. That's right in there. So we are going to make our turn here. up, slow down, and all right, brake on, and engines off, shutting down, all right, TCAS is off, your damper, and switching IRS off, Galley off. Seatbelt signs are off. This 
stairs are going down and the door is opening and switching off. The lights are all off and yep everything is looking good all right and our passengers are disembarking this is a beautiful scenery so I'm gonna turn off the fuel APU off battery off and shutdown is complete Wow. Let me show you the detail. There we are. We're, and we are actually at stand 26. And there you can see the beautifully detailed waiting area, terminal building. Look at all of that. Magnificent. They really have put a, a lot of effort into this scenery. Wow, isn't that delightful? Not bad, and you can see right through the, the glass of the terminal buildings there. So really, really good, really good. And we are at 26 because right there you can see the sign that says 26. Right, we made it. We came in. We have some lovely views climbing over the Rockies and everything. I mean, that was really a treat. The sun was in not bad position. It was over to the left. So if you were on the right side, then you would get that lovely contrast of view. The last time I did this flight, it was in a a Cessna 410 wasn't pressurized so I had a couple of tanks in there and I was flying 18,000 feet or thereabouts and and uh, a little bit closer to the Rockies than we were in this one because this was at 37 no 38,000 feet and uh, yeah <laughs> quite a bit of difference in height so sometimes I had to you know go around peaks and things like that but it was a very interesting experience going uh, on there I left Seattle went into Vancouver that's where I cleared customs and then went over to Calgary and it was uh, during the summer so it was weather was really superb I mean it was really really nice so I really enjoyed that I really did and I hope that you enjoyed the flight the clock says we were exactly on time, one hour and five minutes. So we were perfect. We, we, Ryanair, that's you and I, we were not late like the West uh, Jet was. That West Jet was 26 minutes late, but we were on time. <laughs> and I'm delighted to report that. Good. I hope that you enjoyed the flight. I shall look forward to seeing you on another flight and everyone else. I will see you again next week. Same channel with Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.